Thanks for logging on to WPRI.com. I'm Eyewitness News reporter Ted Nisi, and I'm here with my friend and Target 12 investigator Tim White. We have major news today about a huge mob bust across the Northeast, uh, including the former boss, reputed, of the New England Mafia. Tim, uh, could you put this in perspective for us, first of all? Well, <clears throat> as I've been saying all day today, it's really hard to underestimate how big a bust uh, today's mob sweep is. Um, <clears throat> I've essentially been waiting for this day since we... Uh, started reporting on the federal investigation into the reputed uh, former head of the patriarch of crime family, Luigi Baby Shacks Minocchio, back in 2009. Uh, we had uh, started reporting on his connections to um, uh, uh, getting protection payments from strip clubs in Providence, and uh, we've been hearing about grand jury testimonies and whatnot, and periodically checking in on the case, and then, of course, uh, yesterday we learned of the arrest. So Minocchio, he was picked up, uh, looking at our story here, in Fort Lauderdale. He's yep. 83 years old That's now. Right. Uh, who is this guy? Tell us about him. Yeah, he's a uh, you know, longtime figure in uh, New England LCN. Uh, he uh, became the boss in the 90s. He picked up where uh, Francis Cadillac Frank Salemi left off, left off meaning he was uh, arrested and charged by the federal government. So uh, the leadership moved back to Rhode Island, and Minocchio has run a pretty tight ship, if you will. Um, he stayed off the law enforcement radar screen except for a minor scrape in the mid to late 90s. Uh, he was the reputed boss up until at least 2006. Now, we reported in 2009, we first reported that he uh, handed the reins over to another boss, and that's because, as you point out, I mean, he's not a young man, mm -hmm. and this is not a young man's game, and he was also feeling the heat from the feds in an investigation. Well, healthier than a lot of the bosses. Yes, he's an active runner. Uh, he uh, is an avid skier. Um, you know, he's in his early 80s, but I, I, I say he looks a lot younger than that. So uh, let's talk about the nickname. People always, uh, we get emails about oh, this. Yeah. We, Lu Luigi Baby Shacks Minocchio is what we're saying today. And people, some people say Shanks, but you're hearing it's definitely Shacks. Yeah, well, it has gone back and forth. And I've talked to people in law enforcement and in the wise guy community, if you will. And there's confusion even among them as to whether it's Shacks or Shanks. And I, I got to tell you, when we do these stories, I get tons of emails just on that. Are you sure you have it right? Um, we go with Baby Shacks because that's what the federal government goes with. And if you read the indictment, which is on our website, WPRI.com, um, you will see that it says uh, Luigi Minocchio, and then it lists uh, his nicknames, Louis, Baby Shacks, the professor, and the old man. So those are the nicknames we go with. So it's awkward to ask the boss what his, which nickname he prefers. <laughs> yeah, you usually don't go down that road. Why Shacks, though? Uh, well, there was, there's theories as to why Shacks and theories as to why Shanks. Shacks was that he was a bit of a ladies' man uh, in slang for shacking up, if you will, and Shanks is, uh, was a small knife. Okay. Um, so have you ever met him? I know you've run into a lot of these people of his. Have you ever met uh, uh, Minocchio? I have. Um, uh, several years ago, Federal Hill, um, fairly accessible guy, actually, and this being my beat, I try and reach out to the other side. I mean, I think it's only fair. They never want to comment. Uh, obviously, they don't even acknowledge that La Cosa Nostra exists until St. Laurent did it recently, which is a, a big admission. But yeah, I, I ran into a Federal Hill. He knew who I was. I knew, obviously, who he was. We, we had a really nice chat. We, it had no substance in the context of what we're what talking about. What was he like? About. Was he intimidating? <clears throat> was he friendly? I think he's intimidating just because of who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, you know, a healthy guy, a health nut, um, but he's not massive in stature. Uh, he's, and he's an old man. But he's very respectful. Uh, he was a gentleman, and uh, he knows Rhode Island, uh, knows everyone in Rhode Island, and we had a good talk about that, and, and that was pretty much the end of it. But he, he, was, he was a nice guy. So picking up... Uh, the feds don't think he is. The feds don't like him. <laughs> that came through in the indictment That's today. That's right. Um, so how big a deal is it to pick up a boss, or perhaps at, net, at this point a, a, a former boss who's passed on? How big a deal is that for the feds? Let's put it this way. Um, because he's been arrested before. He has been arrested before, and he was recently identified as the reputed boss. Uh, but... The, there are five families in New York, and uh, it was a big deal when they wiped out the leadership of the five families in New York. The FBI's uh, organized crime radar then shifted to New England, and here's why. The FBI agent, the head of the uh, organized crime task force for the FBI in New England, told me, he said, look, um, for, for this region, La Cosa Nostra is still our number one, number one threat assessment with organized crime. Not Asian gangs, not Latin gangs you hear uh, uh, elsewhere, not like the Russian gangs and Cleveland, Ohio, the yeah. Mexican. It's LCN, and the only active boss left on the street at the time when I interviewed 
uh, Jeff Solette is his name, several years ago. The only active boss left on the street in this country was Louis Minacchio. So, so it's big a deal to get him. big deal to, to take him down. But he's not, we don't think, in charge anymore day to day. He's not the boss at this point. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, law enforcement sources told us, and we were the first to report 2009, that the the power shifted back to Boston. Remember we talked about Salemi mm -hmm. earlier and he had the power. It's now in the hands of, according to law enforcement sources, a guy by the name of Peter Lamoni who was uh, wrongfully imprisoned for 30 years in a famous case involving a corrupt FBI agent. Uh, he came out and was identified as a consigliere or advisor to the family and then stepped up to the big role uh, recently. The federal government has not officially acknowledged this, but it's telling that in the indictment that was unsealed today, uh, they do acknowledge, and Eric Holder acknowledged it in the press conference, Menachio's the former boss. Now, uh, you, I know you once said to me that uh, the transition of power in the mob is not like an election. It's not uh, one day, all right, he's out and somebody else is in. How, uh, was it a clean handoff from Menachio to uh, who we think is the new guy here? I think we're, that remains to be seen. Okay. These things can be really messy. Uh, they've, mm -hmm. in the past, traditionally gotten violent mm -hmm. uh, and have come with a power struggle. So far, we haven't heard of any of that. Um, and there isn't any disputes. I think one thing to keep in mind is the reputed underboss, according to law enforcement sources, is a Providence guy, Robert Bobby DeLuca, and he spent a lot of time in prison with the Boston faction of LCN. So you have strong ties there be, uh, between these two men, and uh, there's undercover video of them having dinner up in Boston after the uh, uh, funeral of a, a big-time mobster up there. So I think that while I would, I would categorize New England's LCN is fractured or splintered right now. I don't think we're going to see a lot of people racing to the top because when you do that, you're on the FBI's radar screen mm -hmm. quick. That leads uh, to my next question, which is the one I think you get the most, which is how powerful is the mafia today in New England? We know uh, how it was in the 70s and into the 80s, but uh, how, in 2011, how powerful is organized crime in, in La Costa Nostra? Depends who you talk to. <laughs> now, law enforcement people I've talked to here, vets, uh, will say that it is a shell of what it one, once was, particularly in New England, um, that it really operated as a secondary government in the 70s and 80s. They had cops in their pocket. They had judges in their pocket. Um, and you don't see that as much much anymore. I think you, you do a little bit more in New York, but at the press conference with Eric Holder, they wanted to make it perfectly clear that's a myth, that they're still operating around here, uh, around the country. Locally in New England, I think why Minocchio has been able to stay off the federal radar screen, um, you know, talking to law enforcement, he hasn't done anything to draw a lot of attention to himself. They, they do a lot of uh, illegal sports gambling. We hear about those busts from time to time. They do a lot of loan sharking. Uh, the strip the, clubs. Well, strip the, clubs. The, the, the protection payments in this yeah. indictment, which do come with 23 years of conspiracy and the extortion, you know, it's a big deal. But it's not drug dealing. Mm -hmm. Once you start moving, uh, you know, cocaine or something like that, suddenly you've got uh, a big headache. And the last big bust we had in that was a guy named Matthew Gugliametti, a, a Providence capital regime. He was accused of moving cocaine, and he's doing a lot of time in prison. So uh, uh, some in the law enforcement community credit, for lack of a better word, Minocchio, for keeping a tight, tight ship. I, I remember... Uh, former Projo column, as Charlie Bass mentioned to me recently, that in the 70s, Rhode introduced the lottery partly to compete with the mob. That's how powerful they were at that point in time. Yeah, well, I think the, the thinking was, if the mob's going to make money, why can't we? <laughs> now, uh, we should say, uh, Minocchio, he's, he's the big fish here, but someone else was picked up. Thomas Iafredi of uh, Johnston was arrested this morning at his home uh, by FBI agents. Who's he? How does he fit in? Thomas Iafredi, according to the indictment, is a worker at uh, the Cadillac Lounge in the Satin Doll. The accusation is that Menachio was accepting protection payments from these uh, strip clubs. Uh, Iafredi was a treasurer of sorts, or a bookkeeper, I should say, and uh, was the conduit of the handoff. Um, in 2009, we reported that Mon two FBI agents approached Menachio in, uh, in a restaurant he has an interest in in Federal Hill and uh, they found an envelope with uh, marked bills on him. And these bills traced back to, uh, to the Cadillac Lounge. He was with the courier at the time when the FBI agents uh, uh, approached him. Um, I'd be curious to know if that was Thomas Iafredi at mm -hmm. the time. We'll, we'll probably learn that as, as this unfolds. We've been kind of on warp speed. And, with, I, and I should say, I'm sorry, yeah. he's, he's not a made member of the Patriarch of Crime. No, to see. our knowledge, they refer to him as a mob associate. And that, I, I fully admit, I'm not quite, what's the difference? How big a deal is that? Yeah, well, to, yeah, there's a big difference in that world that a, a made member is a button man, if you will. Uh, you know, you're inducted into the organized crime family. An associate is someone who 
uh, is obviously associated with organized crime. They help the operation make money, and they make money themselves. Can you get promoted from an associate to made member? Is that the idea? Sure. That's, that was, for a long time, the goal, and you literally had to kill to do it. Yeah. And uh, we, I was going to say that we've been on warp speed with Mafia News the last 48 hours or so. We had Anthony the Saint Saint Laurent just yesterday. Yeah. Um, uh, he said he'd plead guilty. Uh, do you think that was all connected? Well, officially, the U.S. Attorney's Office says that remains to be seen. Um, they're, they're not linking it. But I think what's really telling, read the plea agreement on our website. And I'll just tell people now, go to the last two pages. It's mm -hmm. called The Finding of Facts. First paragraph in that, federal prosecutors were able to get uh, St. Laurent to admit that he's a made member of the Patriarca crime family. Ted, this is extremely rare. That's a big deal. But more importantly, uh, he identified, sorry, we just have a lot going Man on. Man in demand. Yeah. We, uh, more importantly, they were able to identify, uh, he was willing to identify Menacchio as the boss at least in 2006. Um, you know, they don't do things by accident. Um, these are complicated cases. Certainly that's not the one thing, but I don't think it's coincidental that that is unsealed and then later that day, of Menacchio's arrested in Florida. It certainly doesn't hurt prosecutors to have right. a notorious, well-known mobster say, that guy's the boss, or was. Well, I know we'll all be turning to you, and you'll be following this closely as time goes on. Here with Target 12 investigator Tim White, I'm Eyewitness News reporter Ted Nisi. Thanks for logging on to WPRI.com.